how I treat my mother now is a direct reflection of how she treated me when I needed her when I was a kid. Mm. Having said that, how my children treat me now is a direct reflection of how I treated them when they were younger and needed me. Mm. This is very hard for parents to come to, to terms with. Yep. They don't. I think a lot of parents go, that's not true. This is where the disconnect comes. Mm -hmm. I loved my kids. I gave them everything. You gave them everything that you thought thought they needed. But did you give them everything that they needed Mm -hmm. from their perspective? Mm -hmm. Children treat their parents how they were treated when they needed them. Of course, people do say this all the time and... They say the children always remember how you treated them, where you took them to, how you played with them, the stories you read to them, all the toys you buy for your kids, all the the lovely presents you buy. They don't remember those things when they grow up. The only thing they remember is how you treated them, how kind you were to them, how the morals you taught them, the values you taught them, and how you... Uh, exhibited these values and morals in your own life. You, when they no longer need food and shelter, is a direct reflection. Go back and watch the video. It's very interesting. But yes, how I treat my mother now is a direct reflection of how she treated me when I needed her when I was a kid. Mm. Having said that, how my children treat me now is a direct reflection of how I treated them when they were younger and needed me. Mm. This is very hard for parents to come to, to terms with. Yep. They don't. I think a lot of parents go, that's not true. This is where the disconnect comes. Mm-hmm. I loved my kids. I gave them everything. You gave them everything that you thought, thought they needed. But did you give them everything that they needed Mm -hmm. from their perspective? Mm -hmm. And I know that I didn't do that all the time with my kids. I tried to, at times I really did try to, but I hadn't healed my my trauma. And so anytime I was triggered, I wasn't able to be there for my kids. I wasn't able to be present for them. When things were going smoothly, I was good. I was there. I was present. But as soon as something triggered me, poof! I was I was in fight, flight, freeze, or fawn. I was in survival mode, and I could not be present for my kids. Couldn't. And so as my kids grew up and they started to distance themselves from me, I kind of went, mm. what's going on here? What's happening here? And I looked at myself. And now that I'm looking back on my children's childhood, um, I'm recognizing some stuff that mm, I really missed the mark on. And it's not up to my children to tell me where I missed the mark. A lot of parents will be like, well, my kids won't tell me what I did wrong. That's not their job. I was supposed to know what to do as a parent. I was supposed to Mm. know that stuff. That's why we shouldn't be having kids until we know this stuff and we've healed our trauma. God, I wish I would have knew that. Yeah. I want to add here that it is common knowledge that parenting doesn't come with a guide, like a book. You don't, you don't get like pre-knowledge before you start parenting. You learn how to parent as you nurture your child. So it's okay to, to, to realize that there's some things that you missed while you were raising your child, but blaming yourself, gaslighting yourself is unacceptable. Yeah. The best thing to do is to give your child the best that you can at your own capacity. But trying to say that people shouldn't really give birth to kids until they know what it's meant to be a parent. I'll say no, because almost every parent, the parents back in the day, nowadays, parents who are going to be parents in the future, no one really has that guide, that book. Of course, people's got their experience, but kids are different. People are different. People come from different cultures, different backgrounds, different race. People raise their kids differently. People have got different values, different uh, uh, belief system. You know, I can go on and on and on, but one thing is certain. There is no guide. There is no fast or hard rule. You just need to nurture your child Give your child all the best that you can give and put the rest in the hands of God. 
because you can spend so much, you can give your child everything and they turn out to be the opposite of what you envisage that they were going to be. When they no longer need food mm. and shelter is a direct reflection of how you make Something that I find really interesting about this um, video and that phrase, the quote that I, um, that the person was talking about is how a lot of the times especially in African households, in my African household in particular, there's this huge, huge, huge emphasis on forgiveness and letting things go and not allowing the past to mm -hmm. step negate the future. And I think about it and I think about it and I, and I ruminate on it a lot because some parts of what my mom is saying is absolutely correct. But there's something about the way that she says this that makes it feel off and sit wrongly in my spirit. And I'm realizing <laughs> it's because she is aware. A lot of parents are aware of the fact of how they mistreated their children. Yeah. And the amount of things and the amount of shame that they feel. Yeah. For, in some cases, choosing their partners over their, their kids, hmm. you know, choosing work over their kids mm. or, or prioritizing themselves and their needs over their children, mm. all of that stuff, yeah. right? But rather than taking the necessary steps as adults mm. to make the present, the, their present life different and show their children mm -hmm. true remorse and repentance, because, you know, that's the word that Christians love, they'd rather shame you mm into forgiving them yeah so that they don't have to do any work or change who they are mm. and to be honest this is damn shame it's a damn 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 shame mm. because children i feel like are the most forgiven people yeah your child is going to be the most forgiving person towards you mm -hmm. because for a very long time you were all that they needed mm. why why can't you have that compassion mm. and that empathy and that um care to change to be better to do better by your children mm. you know but that's just that's just something i, I i've been thinking about yeah, African parents, as she rightly uh, said, are so difficult. You know, I was raised by my parents and they are Africans, like hardcore African, traditional Africans. Generally, Africans have this uh, connection. I think parenting and Christianity and religion are intertwined. You know, every time a child does something or they try to reprimand the child, they'll always say, honor your mother and your father so that your days will be longer on earth. And this goes just for the child. And the parents never, ever take responsibility for their action. They are never accountable. You know, sometimes a child will do something that is just something that is normal, but an African parent is going to blow doubt that is going to blow that out of proportion just because they're African, just because they know that, okay, this kid doesn't have to do this because I'm the parent. And when you ask like, why did you do this? Why, why did you do it this way? Why did you address it this way? They'll say, no, no, no. You know, I'm the parent. I'm responsible. You know, my child can never do this. My child will never do this over my dead body. Ah, my child will never do this. You know, they don't want to listen. They just believe that what is said in the Bible, that's how everything has to be. But they don't know that in some cases, they are the problem. You know, like she rightly mentioned, most of the African parents in the diaspora, some of them, they follow, they, they, they are just after their jobs. They don't really care about being for their, being there for their kids, like going for their hobbies or taking their kids out for recreation and leisure. You know, they all it's all about going after job after job they can do three four jobs and they keep their kids with their neighbors or they keep their kids in extended uh, care like 24 hours care they prefer to pay 
for care than to be there for their kids. And I ever like as a parent, as an African parent, and as someone who wants uh, to influence my community, I always talk when I'm with my friends, my friends in the diaspora who are Africans, I always talk to them, I tell them that, but why do you do this? Why do you prefer to pay so much money for someone to take care of your kid and you go out to work extra hours than to be with your kid? Whereas, you know, when you do these extra hours, you end up paying ex so much tax. So everything you're working is going back into the system. So I, you're helping the system, of course, but you are not helping your kids. You are not there for your kids. You're always out there working and the kids don't have that comfort and love and warmth from a parent, especially from a, their mother. And this is something that kids really do want and they love. But when the kid tried to tell you that, mom, I want you to be with me. I want you to take me to this so-so and so place. I want to go here. I want to do this. I want to do, you always tell them, no, 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 I'm so tired. I'll have to go to work. I have to do this. I have, it's all about you. So the kid is saying that, okay, kids are the most forgiving people on earth, on the planet, you know, they are easy, they, they are so easy to forgive, especially their parents, because they know that they've been with their parents for as long as ever. I mean, they were born and they were nurtured by their parents. But when the neck late sets in, these kids will notice it and they will react to it. But as an African parent, they will always try to brush it under the rug. Like, okay, you don't have to complain. You know, I'm your mom. You need to listen to me and all that. Yes, she is spot on when it comes to African parents. And this is just, my example is just the diaspora, not to talk of the ones back home, like in ground zero in Africa. I mean, <laughs> how dare you call your parents out? How dare you tell your parent that you don't like what they did or that or this? <laughs> Hell, it's going to broke loose. <laughs>